Martin. Today is Thursday the 7th of August 2014 and today we're looking at a video by the Bark Roller, his um, latest uh, prediction for earthquakes in New Zealand. Uh, this is his video New Zealand Earthquake Watch August 9th to the 11th 2014 and uh, it's been a while since I've done a video about the Bark Roller. In fact uh, it was the Bark Roller that I did my very first debunking video on uh, back in uh, 2011 on March the 7th why the Bark Roller's charts are wrong back in the days when he was using uh, Sim Solar charts which are, uh, were not shown to scale to show his alignments. But anyway, back to his um, recent video, uh, New Zealand Earthquake Watch August 9 to 11, where he's making predictions of possibly a magnitude 7 earthquake uh, for New Zealand. Let's have a short uh, listen to uh, his video. This is an earthquake watch for the New Zealand region for August 9, 10 and 11, 2014. And this is due to the powerful planetary alignment of Earth, Sun, Mercury, which does have a symmetry with the New Zealand region. We also have the geodetic motion and movement of Mercury transiting across the New Zealand region during this time frame. And we also need to consider the supermoon or lunar perigee taking place, all foreshadow the potential for a 7 magnitude earthquake during this watch. Now, this is interesting uh, because he has linked the planet Mercury or alignments with the planet Mercury to earthquakes in New Zealand and he goes on to explain the link uh, between these earthquakes and the Sun-Mercury-Earth alignments which we will take a look at shortly. Um, let's have a, a listen to uh, the clip of um, alignments that he points to. We're now going to look at the historical significance of past earthquakes in the New Zealand region and associated alignments with Sun-Mercury and the Earth and there are a few to get through. A magnitude 6.3 earthquake struck Christchurch on February 22, 2011. This earthquake had 183 deaths associated. A magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck Dartfield, Canterbury on September 4, 2010. This was a widely felt earthquake felt all across New Zealand. A powerful 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck Dusky Sound in the Fiordland region. This occurred on the 15th of July 2009. Now, this was the biggest earthquake since the Buller and the Hawke's Bay earthquakes of 1929 and 1931. A magnitude 6.7 earthquake struck in Gisborne on December 20, 2007. This was a powerful offshore earthquake that caused extensive damage to the Gisborne region. A 7 magnitude earthquake struck in the Warirarapa region on the 2nd of August 1942. This was a devastating earthquake, the second 7 magnitude earthquake for the year. The second occurred on the Earth-Mercury-Sun alignment. A magnitude 7.6 earthquake in the Hororika region on the 5th of March 1934. This was a widely felt earthquake, even felt as far as Dunedin. And finally on January 23rd, 1855, a magnitude 8.3 earthquake struck in the Warirarapa region again. This time it was significant around Palaster Bay where the ground level was raised 2.7 metres. Now this just goes to show that the Earth-Sun-Mercury alignment does have a strong influence with the New Zealand region and must be paid close attention to during this watch period. Now let's have a look at some of those alignments. Uh, this is the alignment on February 22nd, 2011 uh, which coincided with the Christchurch earthquake magnitude uh, 6.3 which uh, killed 185 people. As we can see in the screenshot from my astronomy software Starry Night Pro, uh, the alignment between the Earth, Sun and Mercury, there was a difference in angular separation of just over 3 degrees between the Sun and Mercury as seen from the Earth. Now the interesting thing about this earthquake on, the, on February 22, 2011 is that it was actually a follow on from an earlier earthquake which was on the 4th of September 2010. Uh, which was also a very damaging earthquake. Uh, this one didn't result in, in any deaths, um, but it certainly did a lot of damage. Now, following this earthquake in Christchurch, there were many, many thousands of uh, aftershocks, and there were also new earthquakes that were triggered as a result of uh, this uh, earthquake triggering uh, nearby fault lines. Um, now, the question is, were the earthquakes a result of the alignments between the Earth, Sun and uh, Mercury? And we're going to come back to that, but before I do, we'll look at the other um, alignments uh, that were mentioned in the Bark Rollers videos. So this is the alignment on the 15th of July 2009. We see that there is a difference of uh, just over two and a quarter degrees between the Sun and Mercury. This one on 20th of December 2007, uh, again two and a quarter degrees between the Sun and Mercury. This one on the on August the second, uh, 1942, we see that there is a difference of one and three quarter degrees between the Sun and Mercury. 
and this one on March 5th, 1934, we see that there's a difference of just over two, uh, yeah, sorry, three and three quarter degrees in this one. And finally, this one on 23rd of January 1855, we see that there was a difference of uh, two and three quarter degrees between the Sun and Mercury. So we see that the bar corolla has identified uh, seven earthquakes in New Zealand that he has associated with Sun Mercury Earth alignments. Now, the question must be asked, of course, is how often does the Earth align with the Sun and Mercury? We're going to take a look at that in Starry Night Pro. So here we are on the 8th of August 2014 and we can see that there is an alignment between the Earth, Mercury and the Sun. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, check to see how long it takes for Mercury to travel around the Sun and uh, form alignments. Now Mercury has an orbital period of 88 days, so it takes 88 days to orbit around the Sun. But it's not as simple as simply dividing 88 days in half and saying, well, every 44 days, then Mercury, Earth and Sun will be in a line. Because um, we also have to account for the um, orbital movement of the Earth as it travels around the Sun. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to run this forward and uh, count the days to see just how long it, it takes for Mercury to travel around. So we're starting on 8th of August and I'm going to count the days through as we go until Mercury goes from the far side of the Sun as we see it here right round in its orbit to the near side. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. So it's taken us 70 days to go from the far side of the Sun around to the near side where we now have another alignment between the Earth, Mercury and the Sun. So with 70 days we're going to step it forward again to go right round again back to the far side of the Sun. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 52 days to travel back round to the far side. So it was 70 days uh, on the first half and 52 days on the second half. So obviously uh, this means that Earth, the Sun and Mercury are actually aligning fairly frequently. So if there is actually a link between alignments between uh, Sun, Mercury and Earth and earthquakes in New Zealand, uh, we should be able to see a link uh, between, or a clear link between uh, these alignments and earthquakes in New Zealand uh, whenever there is an alignment. Let's take a look at the evidence and uh, see what it says. Here we are on the GNS Science uh, website in New Zealand and uh, here is a look at uh, New Zealand's largest earthquakes and um, here is a, a chart showing the earthquakes and uh, what I've done is I've checked each and every one of these earthquakes and checked the, uh, the alignments with uh, Earth, Sun and Mercury uh, to see what results we get. So let's take a look at those. So here are the screenshots from Starry Night Pro showing the alignments between the, uh, or, or at least the, the position of uh, Mercury uh, on the date of each one of these earthquakes that, that we see in that chart. So this is on 21st of July 2013 and uh, we can see that uh, Mercury certainly is not aligned with the Sun and the Earth and there is a difference in angular separation of 16 degrees. We can see that Mercury is way off to one side. In the next image we can see again that Mercury is out to one side. There is a, a difference of nearly uh, 9 degrees angular separation. Again, no alignment. And this one from December 23, uh, 2011, we see that uh, Mercury is almost as far out to the, the right in its position on its orbit around the Sun as it could go. And uh, there's nearly 22 degrees um, difference, so again, no alignment. Um, now, February 22, 2011, uh, this was the Christchurch earthquake, uh, which killed 185 people. And we see that there is almost an alignment. 
Uh, the bark roller has called this an alignment in his video, but as we can see that there were over three degrees difference in angular separation between the Earth, uh, Sun and Mercury. But certainly it is closer to uh, an alignment as we see there. The next one is on June 13, 2011, and uh, again, uh, yeah, I would count this as an alignment, certainly. It is uh, just over one degree, and we've got Mercury uh, behind the Sun in very fairly close alignment. This one on um, 4th of September uh, 2010, this was the date of the, uh, the first Christchurch earthquake that started the sequence of um, major earthquakes and aftershocks and we see that there is just over four degrees so uh, as an alignment it's actually pushing it certainly in a uh, two degree uh, analysis uh, it looks like it's aligned but when we account for th uh, 3D, three dimensionals um, then we see that uh, Mercury was actually quite out of alignment by uh, just over four degrees as seen from the Earth. Uh, the next one is on July 15, uh, 2009 and again uh, it is fairly close to alignment we've got just over two and a quarter degrees there so uh, we could count that one as an alignment. The next one is 30th of September uh, 2007 and in this one we see that Mercury again is uh, way out to the side in its orbit there's definitely no alignment here whatsoever between Earth, um, Mercury and the Sun and we've got a whopping uh, almost 26 degrees uh, difference in angular separation. On this one on 20th of December 2007 it is close to alignment just over uh, two and a quarter degrees so uh, that could possibly be an alignment uh, on that one. On the next one uh, 23rd of November 2004 again Mercury is way out to the side and we've got uh, just under 22 degrees difference angular separation. August 22nd, 2003, again Mercury is far out to the side in its orbit and we have uh, 25 and 3 quarter degrees difference. This one February 6, 1995, we've got 6 and 3 quarter degrees uh, difference, so again no alignment on that one. On March 2nd, 1987, which was the date of the uh, Edgecombe earthquake, uh, we've got just under 6 and 3 quarter degrees, so no alignment with that one. And on May 24th, 1968, Mercury is way out to the side and we've got uh, just over tw uh, 22 and one half degrees difference on that one, so definitely no alignment. On June 24, 1942, uh, Mercury is out to the side again with almost 16 degrees difference, so definitely no alignment on that one. On August 2nd, 1942, uh, this is a fairly close alignment with uh, one and three quarter degrees between the Sun and Mercury, with Mercury behind the Sun. This one on March 5th, 1934, uh, although we've got a 2D alignment, when we allow for 3D we've got uh, just over three and three quarter degrees between the Sun and Mercury, so it's debatable whether we can call that an alignment uh, with that amount of angular separation. February 13, 1931, the date of um, one of the Napier earthquakes in Hawke's Bay, and we've got Mercury again far out to the side, so definitely an alignment between Earth, Sun and Mercury could not be attributed for the Hawke's Bay quake on 13th of February 1931. We've got 21 degrees difference on that one. February the 3rd, uh, 1931, which was the first Napier earthquake, uh, we've got 24 and a quarter degrees and again Mercury is way out to the side so definitely no alignment on that one. June 17, 1929, again no alignment, we've got uh, just under 12 and a quarter degrees between uh, Mercury and the Sun, definitely no alignment on that one. March 9th, 1929, Mercury way off to the side again and uh, just over 26 and three quarter degrees. February 12, 1893 and we've got just under four degrees between uh, Sun and Mercury with Mercury behind the Sun. I wouldn't class that one as an alignment. It's getting close though. September 1st 1888 and we've got just under eight degrees between the Sun and Mercury with Mercury behind the Sun so again definitely no alignment for that earthquake. October 19, 1868 and uh, again Mercury is far out to the side in its orbit. We've got um, just under 24 degrees, uh, so definitely no alignment with that one. February 23rd, 1863, Mercury far out to the, the side again with uh, 22 and a quarter degrees, no alignment. 
January 23, 1855. Uh, this one is um, close with two and three quarter degrees, so it could be debatable whether we class that one as an alignment. October 16, 1848. Again, no alignment with Mercury far out to the side on its orbit and uh, just under 24 and a half degrees difference in angular separation. So if we have a look at a summary of those uh, earthquakes and alignments, uh, we can see that uh, 21 of those 27 earthquakes were showing no alignment at all, uh, whereas 6 of the earthquakes, that's 6 out of 27, were showing an alignment of 3 degrees or less. Now if we remember that uh, in any one year we see a minimum of 6 alignments with Mercury, sometimes 7, that means that in a 10 year period we're going to see a minimum of 60 alignments, and in a 100 year period we're going to see a minimum of 600 alignments. Yet even though we've gone back over a century of earthquakes in New Zealand, we've only seen a list of 27 major earthquakes, and only uh, six of those 27 earthquakes coincided with an alignment of Mercury. I think this clearly shows that uh, any uh, claimed uh, link between alignments with Mercury and earthquakes, particularly in New Zealand, uh, are shown to be false. Now, of course, I can't predict when an earthquake won't happen. Uh, I can't rule out an earthquake happening at any time, of course. Uh, nobody can predict when an earthquake uh, will happen with any certainty and it will remain to be seen um, just how accurate this earthquake prediction by the bark roller for a magnitude 6.5 to magnitude 7 earthquake from August 9 through 11 for New Zealand goes. Will this be another failed prediction for the bark roller? Well, only time can tell. As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching. Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Thursday the 7th of August 2014 and today we're looking at a video by the Bark Roller. His um, latest uh, prediction for earthquakes in New Zealand. Uh, this is his video New Zealand Earthquake Watch August 9th to the 11th 2014. And uh, it's been a while since I've done a video about the Bark Roller. In fact uh, it was the Bark Roller that I did my very first debunking video on uh, back in uh, 2011 on March the 7th why the Bark Roller's charts are wrong back in the days when he was using uh, Sim Solar charts which are, uh, were not shown to scale to show his alignments. But anyway, back to his um, recent video, uh, New Zealand Earthquake Watch August 9-11, to 11, where he's making predictions of possibly a magnitude 7 earthquake uh, for New Zealand. Let's have a short uh, listen to uh, his video. This is an earthquake watch for the New Zealand region for August 9, 10 and 11, 2014. And this is due to the powerful planetary alignment of Earth, Sun, Mercury, which does have a symmetry with the New Zealand region. We also have the geodetic motion and movement of Mercury transiting across the New Zealand region during this time frame. And we also need to consider the supermoon or lunar perigee taking place, all foreshadow the potential for a 7 magnitude earthquake during this watch. Now, this is interesting uh, because he has linked the planet Mercury or alignments with the planet Mercury to earthquakes in New Zealand and he goes on to explain the link uh, between these earthquakes and the Sun-Mercury-Earth alignments which we will take a look at shortly. Um, let's have a, a listen to uh, the clip of um, alignments that he points to. We're now going to look at the historical significance of past earthquakes in the New Zealand region and associated alignments with Sun-Mercury and the Earth and there are a few to get through. A magnitude 6.3 earthquake struck Christchurch on February 22, 2011. This earthquake had 183 deaths associated. A magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck Dartfield, Canterbury on September 4, 2010. This was a widely felt earthquake felt all across New Zealand. A powerful 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck Dusky Sound in the Fiordland region. This occurred on the 15th of July 2009. Now, this was the biggest earthquake since the Buller and the Hawke's Bay earthquakes of 1929 and 1931. A magnitude 6.7 earthquake struck in Gisborne on December 20, 2007. This was